Welcome to this webinar of Think Geo Energy in cooperation with Tenaris. Uh, we're glad you can join us today for this presentation by Paola Novelli and Raffaello Sandetti of Tenaris on the casing design optimization for geothermal wells. Paolo Novelli is the technical sales director covering Europe, Russia, and the Caspian region for Tenaris with a particular focus contact and access point for the geothermal activities of Tenaris. Raffaello Sabetti is the Well Design Solutions Manager for the corporate team of Tenaris supporting the company's activities worldwide. The presentation today will share details on the company's activities uh, on geothermal and in particular here the casing design optimization. Hello everybody and welcome to Tenaris webinar on casing design optimization for geothermal wells. First of all, let me thank Alexander and the Think Geo Energy platform for hosting us today. Let me guide you through our agenda. We will have a short introduction on Tenaris capabilities, followed by a technical session presented by my colleague Raffaello Zambetti focusing on technical challenges for tubular in geothermal wells. I will then present you some potential tubular solution focusing on solutions already implemented successfully in the oil and gas industry. We will be also showing a couple of successful case studies and we are looking forward to have a question and answer session with all the participants. Tenaris is a leading manufacturer of pipes and related services for the world energy industry and for our application. We have a production capability of 8.5 million tons of seamless and welded steel pipes. Our manufacturing facilities are located in 18 countries worldwide and are supported by a service and distribution network, which include commercial offices or yard, in more than 24 countries. We also have three R&D centers in Argentina, in Italy and Mexico, focused on the challenges of the production of seamless and welded pipe and on the need of our customers. Tenaris is not new in the geothermal business. Uh, as an example, from 2016, we have been supplying more than 6 million meters of OCTG pipes. In the recent years, we increased our focus in geothermal following the energy transition trend in order to understand which solution already successfully implemented in the oil and gas business can be then used in the geothermal environment. As steel producer, we are aware of the importance of the CO2 emission in our industry. For that reason, we put ourselves a challenging target of reducing by minus 30% our CO2 intensity per ton of steel by 2030. But let's analyze where we are starting from. On the chart on the left, you can see Tenaris emissions compared to the rest of the industry. You can see that the level of uh, CO2 emitted per ton of steel is significantly lower to the rest of the industry, minus 40%, mainly due to our industrial system based on electrical furnace and the use of scrap as main raw material. This low emission level is transparent to the customer thanks to the environmental product declaration, which provide full information to the customer related to the emission associated to the product that they are purchasing. I will now give the word to Raffaello, which will present the technical challenges for tubulars in geothermal wells. Thank you, Paolo, for the introduction. We are delighted to see a broad and diverse audience, ranging from geothermal specialists, oil and gas experts, to young companies willing to be protagonists in the energy transition. In this part of the webinar, we will introduce some of the technical aspects related to geothermal well design, showing the synergies and differences to well design in the oil and gas industry. Let's start with the first phase, drilling the well. The stages of this operation are common between the industries. Other geothermal or hydrocarbon wells are pretty much the same. As some of you may know, the well is designed bottom up and inside out. At first, is defined the setting depth for the production casing, based on the formation of interest and the thermodynamic properties of the fluid we want to produce. After that, based on the formations we are crossing, pore pressure and fracture gradients, the number and size of strings in our well are defined. The well profile in geothermal application depends on both drilling and production loads. When considering drilling loads, 
evacuation and loss of circulation when crossing fractured formations is critical. The first generating collapse loads, while the second burst loads. During production, thermal loads play a predominant role. Fully cemented strings, which cannot freely expand, generate relevant compressor loads. In this slide, we see the stages to obtain our well. At first, we drill the hole. Depending on the formation, different drill bits are used, such as a tricone or PDC bits. After the hole is drilled, in order to grant hole integrity, isolate formations and avoid caving from the hole, the wall is then cased. At last, the casing is cemented in place, either fully or partially cemented. When entering the production zone, in geothermal application, there are several approaches. Bare open hole in consolidated formations where there is no risk of caving, cased for loose formation, and also intermediate solution such as pre-perforated and slotted liners. That final well is drilled and cased by repeating these operations for the required strings, and finally completed with tubing and accessories as required. Even if the concepts behind the well design for geothermal wells are similar to an oil and gas well, there are some characteristics that are worth mentioning. Casing sizes depend on the fluid produced. As we will see later, the size of the production casing may be critical to maximize profitability of the well. Production casing with sizes as big as 958 and 1358 are a common design. Strings are fully cemented up to surface. Even liners and tiebacks, this to reduce the risk of annular pressure buildup and buckling under compression loads. Cement not only displaces the drilling mud, which is a source of APB, but also supports the string, reducing the lateral deformation of the string during buckling. Proper cement jobs are a key success factor for geothermal application, but as we said, often in order to have a high permeability, especially for high entropy applications, there are very big fractures in the formation, in which we can lose cement and obtain a lower than expected top of cement. Depending on the depth of the well, liners may be an option, often connected to surface with a tieback. The use of liners is given by the weight of the string and the capacity of the hoisting system of the rig. For deep wells, this is the only viable solution. In case of high entropy wells producing steam, typically the completion is tubingless in order to maximize the passage area of the well. While on the low entropy ones producing water, a shallow tubing connecting to an ESP pump is used. As we were mentioning before, geothermal wells are characterized by relevant thermal loads and cycles, especially during the production phase of their light. In this image, we represent a typical well load against the Pommes ellipse, where the x-axis is the actual load, tension and compression, while on the y-axis we can see the pressure loads, burst and collapse. The typical thermal loads involve compression and collapse load modes. It is known that a typical well design, based on working strings, may result in not feasible wells, with safety factors below the design factor, but this approach is also known to be over-conservative. In order to properly design a geothermal well, some ad hoc approaches are required. As an example, during design, the string is allowed to work outside the material elastic regime. Entering in the plastic region, as a consequence, string-based design criteria are implemented. For working string analysis, we typically use state-of-the-art commercial software such as Stringnosis and Wildcat. On top of this, for geothermal wells, it's common to perform strain-based design, such as holiday modified method, cold collapse, and short buckling. For this analysis, we typically use proprietary software. Given that compression is an important load mode for thermal wells, here we see a comparison with different connection technologies. A buttress and a premium connection, and we analyze the different compression load bearing mechanism. For a buttress connection, only the thread is bearing compression load by loading the stabbing flank of the thread. Excessive compression may lead to a thread jump in that is commonly detected by an inner diameter restriction. A jump in 
is when the thread of the pin slides on the thread of the box. As a consequence, the pin moves inward, inwards, causing a restriction of the inner diameter, measured with a caliber or a usage, corresponding to the depth of the connection. On the other side, shoulder at premium connections bear compression also in the pin nose and box shoulder, minimizing the risk of a jump in. Another advantage of premium connection is guide tightness, given that these connections have a metal-to-metal -metal seal. Metal-to-metal -metal seals are designed with a geometric interference that, when made up, generates a contact pressure between the pin and the box, which is engineered to avoid gas passage. In a buttress connection, there is no metal-to-metal -metal seal, so no barrier for gas migrating from the inside of the production casing to the annulus. Shall be noticed that even if the well is producing steam, also other byproducts such as gases present in the formation are produced. Driven by the energy transition, in many countries, regulators are also requesting connection with gas sealability for geothermal wells, independently from the well loads or the produced fluid. In order to assess sealability performance of the connection, full-scale tests are performing according to API 5C5 or ISO 13679 standards. Here we see an example of the load points at which a premium connection is qualified for gas tidiness. As we saw previously, the test considers combined axial and pressure loads. During the test, at each load point, sealability is verified by holding the loads and with a specific tracking device detecting leaks in the connection. In quadrant 1, tension and internal pressure are applied. Quadrant 2, compression and internal pressure are applied. While in quadrant 3, there are compression and external pressure. And at last, in quadrant 4, tension and external pressure are applied. Depending on the requirements, four different application levels are defined by the standard. From 1, the less demanding, to 4, the most demanding. For thermal applications, connections are not only qualified for sellability. Driven by the development of steam-assisted gravity drainage applications, also known as SAGD, a protocol for testing connection for thermal application was developed. The protocol is included inside ISO 12835, but is also known in the, in in the industry with its former name, TWCCEP, Thermal Well Casing Connection Evaluation Protocol. Even if it became a standard, an ISO standard in 2013, the schematic you see refers to a qualification protocol performed in our labs already in 2010. The test was performed on six different samples with extreme tolerance configurations, tested for gotting resistance with make and break, and then submitted to pressure temperature cycles. For two of the six samples, also strain-based limit loads are requested. As we already saw, strain-based criteria and tests are a key factor for geothermal applications. Other than compression, another typical well load for geothermal application is collapse, which is typically the cause of casing ID restrictions. In geothermal wells, there are several sources of collapse loads. The reduced backup pressure from the produced fluid, for example steam, annual pressure buildup, partial evacuation due to highly fractured formations or incomplete cementing jobs, and so on. Please allow me to open a small parenthesis in order to explain what is annular pressure buildup. When we have a not closed annulus and trapped fluids, typically drilling mud, when subject to temperature increases, the fluid cannot expand, generating an overpressure in the annulus. This overpressure can be as relevant as to collapse the pipe itself. Even if ID restrictions are not as severe as in the images presented here, with a complete closure and loss of the well, ID restrictions may be critical for tool passage, require a milling of the casing and potentially losing the well. It is impossible to reduce the consideration about corrosion to a single slide, but this is a very important topic we consider worth mentioning. In this slide, we can see a particular behavior of CO2 corrosion, which shows a peak at 70 degrees Celsius. Past this value, the corrosion rate counterintuitively declines. This is due uh, to iron carbonate, which, given the reverse solubility, at temperatures above 70 degrees Celsius, tend to precipitate. 
the precipitated layer covering the surface of the casing have a protective effect, reducing the corrosion rate. Shall be also considered that these carbonates are brittle and can be easily removed, exposing the casing surface, leading to localized corrosion and pitting. Precipitation of carbonates and scales have another important effect for geothermal wells. Flow assurance is significantly impacted by ID restrictions. The scale deposits can be so severe to close the production case or impact the formation permeability. We already know that mass flow is related to the inner diameter of the production casing, but scale deposits also impact pressure losses, which are inversely proportional to the wetted diameter of the casing. In order to remove scales, soda is used to wash the casing. This operation removes the scales but also corrodes the casing, which after time will lead to loss of well integrity. We have completed this quick overview of well design for geothermal wells, highlighting the synergies with an oil and gas well. Now, back to Paolo, who will show you some proven solutions to the challenges we just saw. Thank you, Raffaello. So let me introduce the first potential solution that we already introduced to the geothermal market and I would say successfully. Uh, the connection is uh, called Tenaris ER, easy running, and uh, it has been designed in order to uh, overcome all the operational limit of buttress connection. Buttress connection, as we all know, is an extremely used and known connection applied in several mature fields and as well in the geothermal environment. Nevertheless, some features of buttress connection may be problematic when used in a geothermal environment. Going back to Raffaello's presentation, we had a, a detailed discussion on the need of having a high resistance in terms of compression load, mainly due to the thermal loads and to the uh, restriction of the casing string, which is normally fully cemented. Tenaris CR is a good answer to the challenge, having 100% compression and tension efficiency. The compression efficiency is mainly given by the thread geometry, which is optimized compared to the buttress, and to the heavy shoulder that allow to go above the resistance of a pipe body in terms of compression resistance. This is not all the only benefit that we have in ER connection. ER also have a flash ID, avoiding a J area, so an area where the coupling thread are exposed to the fluid, that may create turbulences, localized corrosion, and loss of well productivity, loss of well flow. Also, the modification implemented to the buttress thread form were focused in optimizing the running activities. Easy running is characterized by a higher thread per inch TPI number compared to buttress, which then translate in a lower makeup turns required in order to reach fully makeup, granting a decrease in the time for running the full string. Furthermore, the design is focused on granting easy stabbing and uh, avoiding cross-threading, eliminating one of the cause of problematics related to buttress, which were the presence of cross-threading and the presence of uh, a relatively high number of rejects and remakeup. One last point, buttress connection, in particular on large OD, are prone to jump out. Jump out is basically eliminated by having an easy running connection with a shoulder and with the performances that we just described. As Raffaello uh, presented, one other feature required by uh, premium connection used in geothermal environment may be gas sealability. In that case, Tenaris is proposing the connection, the most sold connection, which is blue, is a connection uh, premium gas tight that has been used by over 300 operators in more than 80 countries. It brings together all the good features of easy running that was just presented, including a top performance metal to metal seal. We have an easy stabbing, we have a fast makeup, and we have a reduced thread risk, as we just presented on easy running, but also we have a full qualification. Tenaris Blue has been qualified according to ISO 13679 and API RP5C5 Cal4, and has been test proven worldwide by the most 
the, main, the most known operators. It's uh, rated 100% in tension and compression, but also in internal and external pressure, thanks to its metal-to-metal -metal seal design. It has a superior compression strength due to the shoulder and to the uh, thread geometry developed, and looking to the specificity of the geothermal environment, it has been testing successfully under TWCCEP protocol. TWCCEP protocol, as previously introduced by Raffaello, is a specific protocol for thermal application, uh, firstly used for SAGD developments, but can be that can be translated directly to the geothermal requirements. In some cases, uh, peculiar well-designed or geological condition may lead to the need of premium connection with higher performance. This is the case of wedge connection, which are normally used for slim profiles wells. But let me try to enter a little bit more in the details of the wedge technology. The wedge technology relies strongly on the thread form, which is named as dovetail, with a dovetail profile. Furthermore, the dovetail profile changes width along the connection itself, creating what is defined as wedge effect. The wedge effect provides a high over-torque capability and superior compression to the wedge connections. This allows the capability of having an optimum combination between high performance and high clearance, making the wedge connection the optimum solution for flash and near-flash connection. The wedge technology has been in the market, uh, in particular in the oil and gas market, for many years uh, and has proven, through the use in very difficult conditions, including offshore environments, uh, that is a very robust thread uh, with a, a very reduced amount of remake up and rejects, uh, which minimize the drilling downtown and optimize uh, the production and the running activities for the well. Now let me show you an example where wedge connection may bring a significant advantage to the geothermal business. We already discussed about the wedge capability of having a high performance, uh, reducing uh, with a high clearance. Uh, in this chart uh, on the left, uh, you can see a typical geothermal configuration, 13 and 3 8 casing with 9 and 5 8 production casing inside. In case we will migrate, we will use wedge connection, we may have a comparable performance, structural performance, and an enhanced clearance, allowing to move from a 9 and 5 8 size to a 10 and 3 quarter size. This will bring a significant advantage in terms of surface where the fluid can flow. In particular, in this specific case, this will lead to a 24 internal area increase. Raffaello explained us during the previous section that the uh, flow loss are mainly due to the interaction of the fluid with the surface. Uh, in increasing the internal area, we will optimize that, reducing the fluid loss. Standing on some calculation and some discussion we had with some operators, this may lead to up to a 10% increase of the well productivity. Depending on the productivity of the well, in some cases, up to 0 five megawatt electric increase in uh, power capacity for the specific well. The next technology is a very well-known technology in the oil and gas business that we've been, uh, been expanding in recent years, for which we built a complete value proposition. Some aspects of this value proposition are perfectly in line with the geothermal environment. I'm speaking about Doppler's technology. Doppler's technology is a technology focused in uh, modifying the way of running the premium connection in the field by applying a dry multifunctional coating in an industrially controlled environment. This coating will eliminate completely the need of applying uh, storage top, removing storage top and applying running top, bringing significant improvement to the operations by increasing the efficiency, saving running time and reducing the activities on the rig itself. This will also, uh, the dopeless will also avoid any discharge into the fluids or into the formation, 
hence avoiding potential damages to the formation, maintaining an optimum productivity for the well. There will be also some advantages related to health and safety. By minimizing and uh, reducing some operation in the rig, we will reduce also the health and safety risk associated to that. We will have less pipe handling, we will have less waste to manage, and hence the risk and the, uh, the health and safety risk will be significantly reduced. From the environmental standpoint, uh, Dopeless is a unique solution, being completely dry, avoiding the use of any dope for running or for storage, we minimize our environmental footprint. There is no need of clinical solvents, there is no need of soaps, all the chemicals are eliminated and even the protectors may be easily recycled without any need of cleaning and without contaminating uh, our rig and our environment overall. After discussing how premium connection can contribute to the geothermal developments, let me now enter in a session where we will analyze how we can contribute or how we can provide a technical solution related to the pipe resistance, to the mechanical resistance of the pipe, uh, to the, and particularly in this case to his collapse resistance. As Raffaello explained, in many cases uh, there is a requirement for high collapse resistance uh, in geothermal wells, driven by specific condition or by annual pressure buildup. Tenalis has developed a portfolio of solutions looking for the most cost effective in order to optimize the performance of our pipes in terms of collapse, collapse resistance. Uh, we develop a series called high collapse where we maximize our collapse resistance depending on the specific size and grade and also another series defined improved collapse, which is a more cost-efficient solution, still providing a significant improvement with respect to API standard collapse resistance. But let me show you on which parameter we can act in order to improve the collapse performance of our pipes. The collapse is influenced by different key design factors. Some of them are not under our control as a pipe manufacturer. The outside diameter, increasing the outside diameter, we are reducing the collapse resistance, but this is not under our control, this is already defined by the well design. The same happens for wall thickness, which on the contrary, increasing will improve the collapse resistance. We have a limit into that, which is by the definition of the customer and by the need of the well design. Ovality is a parameter on which we can through some specific quality control and some operative practice, improve the reduce the ovality. And this will have a positive effect on collapse resistance. The same applies for eccentricity, which is uh, the difference between the maximum and the minimum wall thickness in, on a section of a pipe. By controlling dimensionally in a better way our pipe, by increasing the quality control and improving our operation, we can reduce eccentricity and hence improve the performance in terms of collapse. Yield strength is a parameter that will always contribute positively on the collapse performance. By increasing yield strength, we will increase the collapse resistance. Uh, there are some certain parameters, uh, certain limits, which are given by the standards or by the specification, but as manufacturer, we can move inside the limit, trying to maximize the yield strength value and hence provide a better collapse performance. The last element are residual stresses, which also contribute significantly. A high residual stress presence will decrease, uh, will compromise the collapse performance. By controlling the operation, in particular, by making sure that straightening is happening at hot temperature, we can reduce the residual stresses, hence providing a positive effect on collapse resistance. As Raffaello presented, uh, it's very difficult to condensate in a couple of slides uh, the behavior of steel, of a, generally speaking, of materials in our environment. Uh, nevertheless, we will try to give you some categories on which we can propose some potential solution. The first category is related to sour service steel grade. Sour service steel grades are grades which are suitable to resist to sour stress cracking. So to an environment where H2S is present. 
Uh, this steel grade has been developed starting from API, standard steel grade, LA-T&T-95, and uh, uh, Tenaris and other manufacturers have been able to define uh, categories of proprietary steel grade with superior performance to PER2 API. Superior either in terms of uh, sour resistance, even in terms of yield strength. Uh, these grades are denominated TN80 sour service, uh, where the number means the minimum yield strength that we are granting. Now, the sour service condition uh, may be present in the geothermal environment due to the presence of some byproducts. One more typical condition for geothermal environment is sweet corrosion. CO2 is often present in geothermal brine, and CO2 may generate sweet corrosion, which will then translate into weight loss and eventually, at a certain point of the life of a well, into the loss of the well itself. In order to minimize that, again looking to a cost-effective solution, we, Tenaris is providing uh, several options, uh, which may go from the free chromium uh, steel to 13 chromium. Obviously, the selection needs to be done based on the specific environment, of the specific field condition, in particular taking into account CO2 content, temperature, pressure. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the, the two options provide a higher resistance to sweet corrosion, granting uh, uh, the suitability of the material even if it is exposed to a specific amount of CO2. As an alternative, to the selection of uh, sweet corrosion resistant steel or to sour corrosion resistant steel, internal coatings may be a cost effective and interesting solution. Internal coatings uh, are normally used into geothermal wells, uh, considering the fact that they have the capability to resist both to uh, aggressive agents such as CO2, H2S, or oxygen, and to some specific operation that often need to be performed into the geothermal well in order to optimize productivity. This operation may be acidification or eventually soda washing. It's interesting to highlight that uh, internal coatings, in particular epoxy phenolic powder coatings, have been, are extensively used in the oil and gas business, in particular in mature fields. Similar way to internal plastic coating, GRE liner may be a cost-effective solution for geothermal wells. GRE liner are glass reinforced epoxy liner which are inserted inside steel pipes and bonded through cement. You can see a sketch of this technology on the left. The steel pipe is basically the outer pipe while the GRE liner represents the inner pipe. We will have a seal ring to grant coating continuity in the connection area and the connection will be made up a standard steel connection. Uh, the GRE liner is a good solution used extensively in the oil and gas business, in particular for injection wells, and can provide an inert material to CO2, H2S, uh, uh, or oxygen, and uh, to some operation that may be performed on the well, such as soda washing uh, or acidification, similarly to internal plastic coating in that case. GRE liner are typically suitable for temperature up to 100 degrees, so their line of work in the geothermal environment is mainly low enthalpy fields uh, where the production fluid is used for heating purposes, uh, industrial heating uh, uh, or uh, district heating. We will now show a couple of case studies showing the use of our products in the geothermal environment. The first case study that we present is related to a long-term relation that we had with uh, a major geothermal operator in Italy. This operator uh, has been exploiting uh, a geothermal reservoir with high uh, enthalpy, with 320 degrees C bottom hole temperature, typically 250 degrees C of flowing temperature, and mainly producing steam for power generation. During the past 20 years, uh, Tenaris ER, easy running connection, have been used basically on all the sizes, going from 24.5 to 7 inch liners. Uh, no failure have been reported and the connection have been used in more than 500 geothermal wells. I would like to conclude my presentation with uh, two other case studies focused on a different segment of geothermal. 
in particularly on district heating. So in this case, we're speaking about production of uh, hot water and use for heating uh, mainly. The first case is related to Romania. We are in the northwest side of Romania, in the Pannonian Basin, so close to the Hungary border, where a municipality is using geothermal for heating purposes since many years. Recently, they extended their network and their capacity of heating through geothermal, and they drilled a new well. For this new well, Tenaris provided a customized solution for the tubing uh, which is hosting, which is holding the electric submersible pump. This solution is an 8-inch wedge 511, a fully flush solution, and allow to optimize the size of the ESP pump and allow the space in the annulus required to have the cable reaching the ESP pump, bringing the power. Another example is related to Austria, where for a hot water thermal bath facility, we have been working with a customer whom main concern was related to the life of the well, uh, wanting to extend as much as possible the life of the well in presence of CO2 and of soil corrosion. The solution that we provided is uh, uh, Tencote, in this case Tencote 8000, in combination with uh, Tenari Sidery Wedge 563, which is granting the coating continuity to the system. Our webinar has come to an end. Thank you very much for following us. As you saw, we tried to give you an overview of Tenaris, who we are and how we are working in the geothermal environment, trying to bring solutions, eventually relying on our experience on the oil and gas. Intentionally, we did not enter into the details, the, the real technical details of the product that we were presenting. Anyway, we are fully available to do that myself or Raffaello in separate discussions. We remain obviously available for any curiosity or question you may have during our question and answer session. Thank you very much, Paolo and Raffaello. A really interesting presentation. Um, and with that, I would uh, move over to the uh, Q&A session and look forward for Paolo and Raffaello to join me here uh, to answer some of the questions that the audience have had. And uh, there are quite a few. So let's see how, how many we can manage in the time that we have. Um, and uh, I think with that, I just jump, jump right into it. Um, during the presentation, uh, you, know, you mentioned uh, the use of strain-based approach for the thermal loads uh, in these wells for geothermal. Could you maybe explain a little bit and, and expand on this point? Yeah, thank you very much for, for this one. very interesting question. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have uh, uh, much time to get into the details of uh, strain-based uh, design. Uh, say the main concept is, let's say, uh, typically uh, during uh, production, uh, the loads induced uh, in the production and the production cycles, uh, what happens is that the, the string, uh, as I was saying before, uh, typically enters in, uh, in the plastic regime. So uh, in order to properly assess your well, uh, what you need to do is, let's say, change the criteria, uh, define, uh, typically are defined, let's say, a maximum uh, strain threshold uh, above which uh, say, during the first cycles or your typical thermal cycles, you don't have to exceed uh, this strain values. And in this, in this way, uh, let's say, you can grant uh, a structural integrity of your well. Uh, Obviously, uh, let's say uh, there are some documents and methodologies that are well known in the industry. Uh, I think one of the pioneers was the paper by Holiday, uh, based, let's say, on uh, this criteria, uh, some modifications and, let's say, more advanced models have uh, been developed. And uh, say, typically, when we are assessing uh, production loads and uh, production thermal cycles, uh, we use those kind of methodologies. Uh, yeah, no, very, very interesting. And I think there's a, there are quite a few questions and I'm just trying to kind of maybe uh, puzzle them together a little bit to, 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 to fit here. Um, uh, the question here that, that came like on the, on the uh, typical design life of a geothermal well, maybe kind of expand on that. Maybe Paolo, a question for you? Yeah, thank you very much, Alexander. And thank you for the uh, very interesting question. 
it's basically impossible to answer with a straight number on which is the typical design life uh, on a geothermal well since it strongly depend on the environment so on the fluid that we are having on the temperature but also on the operation and on the material that we selected there are some material that can be selected in order to extend the life uh, of a geothermal well such as the coatings that we were presenting gre uh, is another example or free chromium, 13 chromium, so sweet corrosion resistant alloys. In some cases, even operation can extend the life of a geothermal well significantly, reaching up to 30 years or even more by having some workover operation. As an example, in some cases, an inner pipe is inserted into the production casing, reducing the ID, but at the same time, extending the lifetime of a geothermal well. I hope I cover your question, Alexander. I think you're mute. To, yes, no, I, I try to, to keep up with all the questions that are coming and uh, and trying to kind of combine them. I mean, that naturally, this is a little bit beyond my uh, technical uh, know-how, so, but let me just kind of jump into the uh, questions regarding to the uh, dopeless connections here. Um, the question here on the the the, the type of, of of dopeless connections for the use of geothermal wells i mean what what would be the qualified uh, temperatures that you're dealing with and uh, and what's the maximum temperature applicable for these dopeless solutions let me take uh, these questions as well um first of all uh, dopeless technology is available on all the connections that we presented so there was not an issue of having a connection qualified all the connections that we presented have been qualified for topless. The maximum operating temperature for topless is currently 150 degrees C. Nevertheless, we have to consider that this is to prevent and to preserve the characteristic of topless for optimizing the makeup. Often, the string in a geothermal well are fully cemented, so we are not considering to expose them to temperature and then to reuse it. So in that case, it can be even used in a high enthalpy well with a single run followed by a cementation. Let me also uh, highlight that we have development ongoing in order to extend the temperature uh, availability of the topless solution. Um, yeah, um, you mentioned this. Uh, the steel grates suggested for the thermal load resistance is also a question that that came. I think that's more for uh, Raffaello, so I will let Raffaello on. So sorry, but I was interrupted uh, the communication. Can you repeat, please, uh, Alexander? The question is what what steel grades would be suggested for the for the, you know for the thermal load resistance for these wells? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, let's say typical for uh, geothermal loads. Uh, what we typically range is uh, from uh, API grades, so you can go from uh, typically uh, L80 T95. Uh, then you can have, let's say, also our proprietary grades. So you can range with uh, uh, some solutions like the one uh, as a, an improved collapse, uh, an improved collapse, uh, let's say, uh, based on, on a yield criteria. And then you can extend, let's say, to uh, higher end uh, tubulars, like the, like the high collapse uh, grades that we are using. And then there are also some uh, specific grades uh, that uh, are the ones that are uh, the analysis proprietary thermal grades, uh, in which, let's say, based on a, a particular, uh, let's say, control and batching inside our production lines, uh, we have developed all these products specifically uh, for thermal applications. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I, I have problems keeping up with all the questions that are coming. So let me just kind of go through the list that I've just copied over here. Um, uh, one of the questions here is the um, the, uh, the the oil and gas wells here in general. A kind of oil and gas wells don't necessarily experience these casing collapse as much as geothermal. Like, what what is the reason for that? Yeah, uh, let me also take uh, that one. Uh, let's say, uh, first of all, uh, one of the peculiarities is uh, the thermal cycling. Uh, 
uh, even if it doesn't appear critical for collapse, uh, there is a peculiar phenomena which is known in the industry as a uh, cold collapse, uh, which is that they, uh, while you are uh, at the high temperature, so you are producing your fluid, uh, typically in the high entropy wells, uh, what happens is uh, your string enters in the plastic region. So what you're generating are residual stresses when you go back uh, let's say to uh, let's say your geothermal gradient temperature. And these residual stresses are uh, tensile stresses. And as, uh, as we know, uh, tensile, uh, let's say tensile loads uh, uh, reduce what is the, the collapse capacity of, uh, of the tubular. So what, um, what happens is that in some cases, uh, these residual tensile stresses are high enough, let's say, uh, to reduce the, the collapse capacity and they make your, uh, your your string uh, collapse. Obviously, uh, most of the times, these collapse loads are not catastrophic loads where you have the complete uh, closure of the well, but you can detect them as a... As a uh, the other, uh, let's say, peculiarity is that uh, where are most of the high entropy geothermal wells? Uh, typically, they are, let's say, uh, near to, to fault regions, uh, they are, let's say, in uh, crossing very unconsolidated formation, uh, in some cases, movable formations. So what appears to be, let's say, uh, a collapse loads in terms of, of external pressure uh, at the end is uh, typically a geomechanical load. So uh, the effect is still, let's say, an external load uh, on your casing. Uh, the result is an AD restriction, but it's not, let's say, the typical collapse load given only by pressure. Hopefully this answers the question. Um, um, yeah, woof, there's a lot of questions. Uh, another question here. Uh, these are getting very detailed, but the metal to metal seal. Uh, is this mandatory for geothermal applications? Uh, because I mean, it's just described that the, the, the flow pressure can be relatively categorized as low compared to oil and gas. Is that, is that correct or? Let me take that one, Alexander. It is uh, absolutely true that normally the work impression of the geothermal environment are lower compared to the oil and gas. Nevertheless, we found several cases in which uh, it was required as mandatory metal to metal or at least strongly suggested by the authorities in order to improve uh, the well condition and improve uh, the string uh, sealability. In some other cases, strongly depending on the fluid produced, uh, we may have something more than steam we can have some contaminants which may suggest uh, to have a metal to metal seal so the straight answer is it is not mandatory but we're seeing an increase of use uh, due to suggestion from authorities or specific needs of the field um, here's another question regarding the higher grade materials um, in, in geothermal applications can maybe can you Give us a little bit of, a, of, a, of an idea, kind of like of, of certain trends there. Uh, let me take that as well, if you don't mind. Uh, um, I mean, in our experience, uh, the geothermal approach towards well design is pretty conservative. So we tend to see a, a repetitive uh, approach in terms of definition of the string. Uh, well design of the wall thickness of the of material and even on the steel grades. Nevertheless, we did notice as well a sort of evolution, in particular coming from Central Europe, trying to move a little bit towards higher strength material. There is one important aspect that Raffaello mentioned in his answer before, which is that uh, the higher we go with the yield strength, the lower the performance it is in terms of uh, thermal load resistance. So if we want to optimize the thermal load resistance, the use of the high yield strength steel will be in a way limited in a vegetal environment. Uh, I mean, kind of like touching a little bit on the on the question of temperature here, is that most of the, the liner technology and internal coating will not work over 200 degrees Celsius. I mean, you mentioned some limitations there. Um, but are there ongoing studies to improve the resistance on, let's say, the higher? temperatures for, let's say, particular uh, high enthalpy projects in geothermal? <laughs> yes, there are. There is some study. I would say that the limitating factor is mainly the material itself. Uh, uh, 
if we stay with uh, epoxy phenolic coating, the limit will be around 200, 250 degrees C maximum. There are other plastic material which may have uh, a resistance above that, or we can go to ceramic coating, which is a field that we have seen has been explored, which grant a higher temperature performance. The main issue there is always the economical balance between the material that we select as a coating uh, and uh, the cost that we are going to have on the well. So there are ongoing studies. I don't think there is uh, uh, a solution nowadays for that. One last point where we see coatings extremely interesting is more on the low enthalpy field. Again, speaking about in particular Central Europe and Northern Europe, we see a lot of increase of projects focusing on the use of geothermal energy for heating purposes. In that case, the typical temperature is around 100, 120 degrees. And in that case, uh, coatings are suitable in terms of temperature resistance. Um, yeah, here's the, the question on your experience on casings with internal coating against corrosion. What's your experience on uh, being, being on that? And, and since when have you been supplying these casings to geothermal? Now, our experience on coatings, as we try to highlight during the presentation, is mainly coming from the oil and gas field. In the oil and gas field, coatings have been used extensively, in particular in mature fields, under sour corrosion in mature fields and uh, under were, uh, were uh, loads, basically, due to the sucker roads and the tubing. In geothermal, is I would say it's a new technology uh, that uh, we have seen an increased interest. We received several tender asking for that. I don't think uh, there is one project uh, that we were showing in our case study in Austria, uh, but we are seeing a trend of an increase of use of coatings even in geothermal. Um, one other question here. I mean, we're getting close to the close to the end, and. One of the questions, like, I mean, we see this in, in geothermal now, this increased talk about closed loop systems. Um, uh, and in the context of, of, of what you are providing or what your sol solution provides. And here's the question on, on VIT tubes. Um, uh, does this solution apply when, when, when casing is all the way down to the rock, for example? Or how would you see your solutions in that context? I think it's a very relevant point. Uh, similarly to what discussed before, I don't think that the market has yet a straight answer. VAT basically is uh, a almost perfect isolation on the tubing, which will allow to preserve the energy, to preserve the temperature of a fluid. It has an important limitation, which is geometrical. We will increase VOD of our tubing by adding uh, a, an outer pipe and uh, the vacuum in the middle in order to uh, assure the, the isolation. In that uh, uh, environment, uh, I think it's very specific. It's very specific to understand in which field condition it may work or it may not work. As scenarios for VIT, we have uh, uh, work in the oil and gas industry again in some steam assisted uh, uh, project uh, we are able to provide the product and we're looking forward to see the right project uh, in geothermal where VAT can be deployed so trying to kind of uh, go through some more of the questions here i mean I'm, we will definitely not get to all of the questions here uh, so i would assume that i mean i've copied all the questions uh, to the team uh, of tenars and i will share this with you and i would assume that maybe some of these unanswered questions you'll be able to answer uh, to the people that are registered to the event to be shared both with the recording of the event. Um, uh, another question here um, and is the uh, specific testing requirements for pipe and connections for geothermal of steel pipes, like both with coatings or liners. I will take that, but I will ask the support of Raffaello. Uh, let me start from the connection. Uh, for the connection, there is a specific test that we have presented, which is not uh, has not been created for geothermal, but is very applicable for geothermal since it involves uh, thermal loads. I will ask Raffaello to just give us a quick view on the TWCEP testing uh, for connection. Well, uh, as I was mentioning in the presentation, uh, very quickly was, but the, uh, this protocol was uh, developed uh, uh, for SAGD applications. 
But now, let's say, given that uh, pressure loads and temperature loads are more or less aligned with the high enthalpy geothermal applications, uh, the same protocol is being used also in order to qualify and full scale test uh, the connection. Uh, typically, let's say the test is, has, uh, let's say, multiple, uh, multiple specimens uh, in order, let's say, to test, uh, let's say, uh, all the extreme uh, manufacturing tolerances. So, let's say, to define all the uh, worst case scenarios. You have, let's say, uh, as usual, the typical galling resistance testing. And then uh, uh, what you do is you, you apply, let's say, uh, different pressure and temperature cycles. So your connection is being tested, let's say, at the ambient temperature and high temperature, let's say, above 200 degrees uh, Celsius. And you're, let's say, when you're doing this pressure temperature cycles, you have, let's say, without pressure, with pressure, with low temperature and high temperature, and you make all the combinations. Uh, obviously, uh, on top of this, uh, you have, let's say, the, the typical API 5C5 uh, sealability and structure integrity full scale test. Uh, another one question here on uh, supply line pipes for the above ground gathering specific to geothermal services. Uh, is that something that Tanara supplies? And, and if so, what special steel grades and alloying would you then uh, recommend for geothermal? We do, we do. We have a branch uh, in which I've been working, by the way, uh, for 10 years, uh, which is the line pipe branch uh, that supply weldable uh, steel pipes uh, for this kind of application. Uh, I would say that uh, one relevant technical aspect uh, beside the weldability is uh, the insulation. Normally, they use some polyurethane foam. We do have some agreement with some coater and we can provide the full package. Uh, I would say that these are the main. Uh, uh, technical challenges uh, when uh, speaking about line pipe for above the ground for geothermal applications. Uh, and then maybe two last questions uh, on the on the coating here. How do you grant the continuity of the grant of the coating across the connections of the piping? That's a very relevant question. Uh, uh, Tenaris has a specific solution which is coming from a connection named Tenaris Aldri 563. CB. CB stands for corrosion barrier. Basically, is constituted by a uh, PTFE ring which connects the uh, pin with uh, uh, the box, so with the shoulder of our connection, in this way granting a continuously coated uh, string. We also apply the coating of the shoulder. Uh, this is a field proven solution again in the oil and gas industry and what we are normally uh, providing to the market. Here's another question that just came, the lifespan of the internal coating that you presented on. Lifespan, I, I understand is the, I mean, such as the design life of a coating. Again, this is a very complex question to answer, considering the different applications and considering the different environment. Nevertheless, uh, we are speaking about decades in some cases. Uh, uh, it depends again a lot on the different environment in terms of corrosive, but more significantly in terms of erosion, uh, our experience in the mature fields is often on the use of tubing and saccharose, which continuously were. We have performed cycles, up to thousands of cycles in order to test our coatings, uh, but you may understand that the lifespan of the coating itself will depend more on the number of cycles than on the material itself. So it's a very difficult question to answer uh, here without knowing the technical details. And I think at that point, I think we should we should leave it. There are so many more questions here. But what I would propose is that uh, I will share all these questions with the team of Tanaris, uh, and uh, they will then maybe share uh, in an email communication to the participants of the event some of the, the answers to the questions. Uh, and I assume that Raffaello and Paolo would be also accessible for further up questions that you might have. Uh, and uh, a recording of this presentation will be shared uh, via Think G Energy as a news piece, uh, but it will also probably be made, made available by Tanaris. And with that, I think that's all for today. I would like to thank Paolo uh, and Raffaello for the presentations and the participations uh, uh, here in the, in the Q&A. Uh, and for Tanaris uh, for joining us today. And uh, with that, have a good summer. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and uh, it'll be interesting to follow things going forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alexander. And thank you to all the participants. Thank you very much.
Everybody.